Biden and Trump has been getting a lot of, of attention over the last couple of days, but really it's just between uh, and what the White House is saying about a White House issue, a Joe Biden issue, and what the Justice Department is saying in the earliest stage. And they really didn't uh, wait that long to appoint this special counsel. This has only uh, been publicly known for like three and a half days, and now there's already going to be a special counsel. So um, I, I would expect there to be a lot of Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, just a, two quick things at the top. Uh, we've seen the breaking news reports of the tornado damage in Selma. Uh, first, our hearts and thoughts go out to the Selma community and everyone impacted by the storm. Our team here is monitoring and assessing the situation and reaching out as appropriate to local and state officials to offer our support. And before I start and, and turn over to my colleague who is going to be uh, giving you all a preview of the bilat that the president's going to have with the J uh, Japanese prime minister and also do a preview of uh, next Tuesday with the president's uh, bilat with uh, the prime minister of Netherlands, I just want to say a couple of things um, and uh, make sure that uh, everyone saw this. Uh, it's a statement from Richard Sauber. His statement reads, as the president said, he takes classified information and materials seriously. And as we have said, we have cooperated from the moment we informed the archives that a small number of documents were found, and we will continue to cooperate. We have cooperated closely with the Justice Department throughout its review, and we will continue that cooperation with the special counsel. We are confident that a thorough review will show that these documents were inadvertently misplaced and the president and his lawyers acted promptly upon discovering of this mistake. Uh, with that, uh, my colleague is here, uh, John Kirby, to talk through the bilat tomorrow and also with Japan, Prime Minister, and also the bilat with the Prime Minister of the Netherlands next Tuesday. And then I'll come back. Good afternoon, everybody. So I think tomorrow, you know, President Biden's going to be welcoming uh, Prime Minister Kishida of Japan here to the White House. He's looking very, very much forward to that. Two leaders have already gotten to know each other quite well uh, during in-depth discussions uh, over the last year, Cambodia uh, at the East Asia Summit and in Tokyo for their bilateral meeting in the Quad Summit in May of 2022, as well as through their work together uh, at the G7. Since taking office, President Biden has invested in our alliances to better equip us to collectively take on the 21st century challenges we face, whether that's the DPRK's pursuit of uh, weapons of mass destruction, uh, weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missile and their ballistic missile program, China's assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific region uh, and globally, or of course Russia's unprovoked war in Ukraine. Now on each of these challenges, uh, and on many more, Japan has proven a steadfast ally, ready to step up and do its part to advance our shared national security interests and values. Now, I'm just going to be 
set a little bit of the backdrop here for this particular visit. Last month, Prime Minister Kishida released Japan's new national security strategy and committed to boosting Japan's defense spending to 2 percent of their GDP. Uh, in, uh, that includes investments in new defense capabilities, and that's a historic commitment by Japan. Prime Minister Kishida will arrive in Washington after a set of extensive, actually has arrived, uh, after a set of extensive discussions with European partners from Italy to the UK to France, of course, to Canada. Uh, and he and President Biden are going to have the opportunity to debrief on those discussions as well. And then, of course, yesterday, you saw the two foreign ministers and the two defense ministers of our countries uh, get together and uh, announce some significant new uh, improvements uh, to the alliance. Upgrades, in fact, to U.S. force posture in Japan, which now include the stationing of a Marine littoral regiment in Okinawa, as well as advanced capabilities uh, from intelligence uh, collection analyst, uh, analysis to, to anti-ship capabilities. But we modernize the alliance by uh, announcing that attacks to, from, and within space could lead to the invocation of Article 5 uh, of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. Expanding bilateral exercises between our two countries and training, uh, which includes uh, in, the Japan's, in Japan's southwest islands. And, of course, deepening cooperation in the region to include trilateral training and exercises with Australia and increasing cooperation with the Republic, in, Republic of Korea on ballistic missile defense, anti-submarine warfare, maritime security. All these moves are not only going to strengthen our combined ability to defend Japan, but also will allow the United States and Japan together to provide for peace and security in the Indo-Pacific region and bolster deterrence uh, in the region and globally. Now, I do think that tomorrow will also give President Biden an opportunity to discuss with Prime Minister Kishida progress that we're going to be able to make together in this coming year on a range of national security and economic issues. Japan, I think you know, holds the G7 presidency. They've just taken a seat on the UN Security Council. Uh, and while we're going to be hosting the APEC this year, as well as seeking to make swift progress on the Indo-Pacific economic framework, there's a lot of overlap there, and we're looking forward to that. We'll discuss uh, how we're going to align these agendas uh, going forward. So tomorrow's program, we expect, is going to be a full one. But from our perspective, uh, the message is absolutely clear. Japan is stepping up and doing, uh, doing so in lockstep with the United States. Uh, our investment in our alliances is paying huge dividends, and we look forward to celebrating that tomorrow. Speaking of alliances and partnerships, uh, I'm also pleased to announce that next week President Biden will welcome Prime Minister Mark Rutte of the Netherlands to the White House on Tuesday the 17th to further deepen the historic ties between our two nations. As strong NATO allies and global partners, uh, these two leaders are going to reaffirm our shared efforts to strengthen transatlantic security and economic prosperity. They'll discuss our steadfast support of Ukraine, and the Netherlands has been a very key supporter of security assistance uh, in Ukraine. In fact, uh, they've already uh, provided uh, a, bi a billion dollars uh, of that and are committing more, I'm sorry, almost three billion committed and committing almost uh, a billion more going forward. They're going to be able to, to discuss all that cooperation going forward on critical technologies and a shared vision for uh, uh, a swift end to this, uh, to this war in Ukraine. They also plan to talk about a range of issues uh, that are essential to strengthening democracy, whether that's respect for human rights, rules-based international order around the world, and including uh, as co-hosts of the upcoming second Summit for Democracy. So a big week next week, too, with a very key ally and partner. We're looking forward to that. And, uh, John, I understand that the leaders will be focused on deterring uh, the threat from China as well as other adversaries, including Russia, uh, nuclear powered adversaries, North Korea, Russia, China. <coughs> but what would the leaders be uh, thinking about in terms of this latest reaction, uh, this latest announcement from South Korea saying that they're open to acquiring nuclear weapons? Will uh, President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida be focused on this? And does the administration believe that a nuclear South Korea contradicts U.S. policy of denuclearization in the entire peninsula? The United States remains committed, President Biden remains committed, to the complete denuclearization of, of the peninsula. Uh, and, uh, and that hasn't changed. Um, uh, the Republic of Korea has made clear that they are not seeking nuclear weapons. But what we are going to seek jointly together with them uh, are um, improvements uh, in extended deterrence capabilities. Uh, so we're going to move forward on that. Okay. And while we have you here, uh, Ukraine has 
confirmed that they will be receiving tanks from the UK as well as Poland. Um, and during President Zelensky's visit, I think President Biden made it clear that the reason that the U.S. is not providing all the weapons that Ukraine is asking, including these kinds of, you know, um, uh, tanks, is to ensure that uh, the U.S. is avoiding an escalation to the war and ensuring NATO unity. Does the President believe that U.K. and Poland's decision to provide tanks to Ukraine will work against those goals? The President fully supports those decisions, and those are sovereign decisions that those nations make about this kind of security assistance they provide. That's been the case throughout this entire length of the war. Uh, we respect that sovereignty, and we certainly uh, are grateful for all the additional security assistance that nations are providing. I talked about the Netherlands. They provided uh, air defense capabilities as well as howitzers. Um, so uh, we're grateful for that. And But these are decisions that they have to make, the, the President uh, believes. And these announcements, I think, reinforce this belief uh, that there is terrific uh, solidarity by the international community behind Ukraine and finding ways to support Ukraine. Just next week, uh, Secretary of Defense will be hosting yet another contact group meeting over in Europe uh, to uh, contribute or to find ways to contribute more security assistance from more partners. Uh, those have been very, very successful. So the President believes that these uh, that all these decisions uh, are actually mutually reinforcing of a larger issue here, and that is solid international community support behind Ukraine. Can we just do a recap on the visit tomorrow? If there, is there going to be any more announcement outside of the defense aspects of this visit? Tomorrow? I'm not going to get ahead of uh, the meeting that hasn't happened yet. I'll let the president uh, summarize it. We'll have we'll have a readout afterward. Thank you. Non Japan question, since we have you here, John. Um, an, or an organization called uh, Hostage Aid Worldwide has sent a letter to the president asking for a meeting with him regarding uh, the uh, hostages that have been held, who are dual national, who have been held all over the world, but particularly in Iran. Until now, they have not got an answer. Do you know why uh, the White House is not giving them the attention that have been given to other hostages? We take each case uh, uh, seriously, and we take each case individually. And just to be clear, dual national citizenship has nothing to do with it. If you have a blue passport, if you're an, uh, if you're, uh, an American citizen, whether you're a citizen of an another nation or not, doesn't matter. That means you're going to be treated the same. All Americans are treated the same, regardless of whether they have uh, citizenship in another nation. Paul Whelan's a great uh, example of that. So uh, we work each case individually, we work each case seriously, and we try to keep the families as informed as possible. I, I won't uh, speak to specific meetings that, that have or, ha or have not uh, occurred. Uh, when we get requests for meetings, we take those seriously too uh, and do the best we can uh, to accommodate. It. And certainly uh, we want to make sure that um, that in our communications with family members that we are not doing or saying anything that actually makes it harder for us to establish a, a release mechanism for them. And, and, and you have to be mindful of that when you're uh, in the public talking about these cases, that you, you, you've got to be careful that you're not putting anything out there in the public space that could make it harder. So each one is reviewed individually and, uh, and sincerely. And if, and if a meeting can be done and should be done, then, you know, then, then we certainly will work to accommodate that. Would we follow up with this letter? I'm sorry? Follow up with the letter that the <laughs> we're, the we're familiar House. with the letter. I, I don't have a response to the letter for you. I wouldn't do that from the podium. Uh, we'll certainly uh, respond appropriately. Is Ridge Alconis on the agenda for tomorrow, John? I, I won't get ahead of the, the president's uh, uh, discussion with Prime Minister Kashida James. Uh, we're certainly the president is, is aware of uh, lieutenant's circumstances in, in Japan, um, uh, as is uh, leadership across the military and the Defense Department. Um, but uh, but I'm not going to, I won't preview or get ahead of the, the President's Thank specific you. agenda. Thank you so much. Can you give us your reaction, the President's reaction to reports that Russia is building up its forces in the East? What's the significance of that and where do things stand in terms of any potential effort to try to get the two sides to sit down at the table? You mean the East of, U inside Ukraine? Yes. Inside Ukraine. Yes. And I have one more follow-up. We we, we've obviously been watching very closely. Uh, military operations, particularly in the east of Ukraine, the Donbas area. Um, and as I've said, even from, from uh, here in the briefing room, the, the violence, the fighting in, in areas around Bakhmut and now this town called Solidar has been, uh, has, has been significant and severe, and the fighting has been sharp. 
uh, between both sides. Uh, we've talked about in Bakhmut specifically, this is largely private military contractors. It's Mr. Prigozhin largely in the Wagner group that have been involved in much of the ground fighting there. Uh, but it has been vicious. Uh, and that's why uh, get going into the winter, knowing that the fighting isn't slowing down there, that, that we have been so focused on providing additional security assistance to Ukraine just last week. Ukraine uh, announced for you, you know, nearly $3 billion worth of, of systems. Uh, and there will be more coming, Kristen. Um, I can't speak to Russian intent here or specific uh, unit movements or, or, or what their goals are. I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume to speak for the Russian Defense Ministry. I would just tell you that as they continue to literally throw bodies uh, at the fighting in, in Bakhmut, because they have lost an extraordinary amount uh, of largely convicts uh, in this fighting. As they continue to do that, they need to know and understand that the United States, as well as our allies and partners, are going to continue to make sure that Ukra Ukraine can defend itself in that area and do so effectively. And I mean, I don't mean to belabor this, but look at the area, right? This is the Donbass area. We've talked about this. It's a lot like Kansas. It's farmland. It's open ground. And so we want to make sure that we are providing the kinds of capabilities to Ukraine to be able to succeed in that environment. That's why Bradley fighting vehicles were part of the package that Korean announced. Um, that's why the Pentagon will very soon be uh, DOD and, and our allies will be starting some uh, combined arms maneuver training outside of Ukraine for up to battalion level units of the Ukrainian armed forces to help them in this fight. Can I just try one more? We're going to direct 99% of our questions about the classified documents. To it would be okay with me if it was 100%. I, I, I do have one for you. <laughs> Has there been an assessment about any potential national security risk of having these classified documents in the president's private think tank here in Washington and his home in Delaware? That would be a, a question for the Justice Department because they are conducting, they're conducting a review now. You saw that the, they've announced a, a special counsel. That issue would be for them to speak to. Can you speak broadly to the national security concerns about having classified documents in private spaces? The president has spoken to, uh, to how seriously he takes uh, the handling of, of classified uh, documents. And um, he, as somebody who's aware of the process myself, did exactly the right thing, which is to have them immediately uh, turned over. And that's, that's where this appropriately lies. And again, the Justice Department would be, would be the place to go to, to answer your question. Uh, so I have one question on Japan, then maybe one on Ukraine. On Japan, um, are, you, uh, are they going to be discussing the semiconductor uh, exports to China and efforts to restrict those uh, exports? Is that going to be a topic? And is it, do you see this as very important to have a country like Japan join those efforts to have some sort of chips control, if not a ban, but to, to have efforts in that area to, to control? Again, I, I want to be careful not to get ahead of President Biden. Uh, I, I think, as I alluded to, it's going to be a very full and robust agenda. But I think it's safe to say that when it comes to issues he discusses routinely with his counterparts bilaterally and in multilateral settings, supply chains, resilient supply chains to include uh, with respect to high technology is always a, a part of the discussion. But I won't, again, get ahead of, of what they're going to say. And on uh, Ukraine, I know you've said many times you don't want to talk about the intent of uh, the Russians, but what do you make? It's not that I don't want to. I can't. I mean, I make of uh, the, the new assignment, if you could call it, uh, of uh, Valery Gerasimov, and what does that say maybe about the Russian strategy as he's been named the new man in charge of the war efforts? Yeah, well, they've gone through quite a few leadership changes, haven't they, now in 10 and a half months? Um, and uh, again, I, I think Karine said this very well yesterday, we'll let the Kremlin speak to their decision making here. Um, but, uh, but they've gone through a lot of leadership changes. Uh, clearly, in an effort, almost from very early on, in an effort to overcome uh, the sorts of difficulties they've had in this war, difficulties which remain, whether that's logistics and sustainment, uh, uh, ISR, intelligence surveillance reconnaissance, the ability to gather information, to communicate, command and control between units, certainly unit morale and cohesion, and without a doubt, I mean, just look at what's been going on in the last couple of weeks, uh, battlefield performance. So interesting that they have now gone back to Gerasimov, who was in charge at the very beginning, um, who is essentially the chief of their army staff, not an operational commander. It's an interesting selection. I think you know they, they should speak to that. But I think it's indicative and shows uh, the degree to which the Russians continue to struggle to get it right in terms of just leadership command and control problems. Okay, 
Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I had a question, like tensions are rising again uh, between Sweden and Turkey. Uh, how confident are you that, that these two countries can resolve these tensions? And uh, how confident are you that Sweden would be able to join NATO soon? And I would have a follow-up. We firmly the support their ascension. I think you know that President Biden's made that very, very clear. Um, and uh, and uh, so too does the, the, the vast majority of, of, of NATO nations. Um, I certainly let those two nations speak for themselves in terms of the discussions that they're having. You saw yesterday Swedish officials said publicly that they believe that, that these discussions are actually on a positive track, uh, and we certainly hope that's the case. And on the classified documents, uh, have there been you know, any other countries in touch with the administration expressing some kind of concerns about how secure uh, classified documents are and how, like, confidential information about those countries could have circulated? I'm not aware of any such discussions or concerns. Um, Alex in the back. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the family and uh, supporters of uh, Russian dissident Alexei Navalny are increasingly concerned about his health. In fact, even Russian doctors are yeah. openly putting their name yeah. to a letter. Yeah. Um, is there anything you can do to let the Kremlin know that... We like, share the concerns, concerns and it, it continued believe that he should be immediately released, obviously, and short of that, to make, to insist uh, that he gets proper medical care. Uh, so we've seen those concerns and share those concerns. Uh, and uh, 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 we'll continue to uh, make plain uh, uh, those concerns to Russian authorities. Uh, is the United States, oh, right there. Sure. The United States concerned that uh, Soldar has fallen to the Russians or is could be falling to the Russians. Can't confirm the reports that it's fallen. I mean, I've seen uh, the Russian proclamations about this. Uh, the Ukrainians tell a different story. We're not on the ground, so I, I'm not, we're not in a position to confirm it. Um, it's a small village in the Donbass. Uh, uh, we believe that the Russian interest in it um, is sort of twofold. One, because they see it's uh, securing it as key to their ability to hold and sec secure it and to hold Bakhmut. Um, there's also salt mines uh, there, so we also think that there's a bit of an economic incentive, particularly by Mr. Prokhozhin, uh, to take possession. And if Russia were to take Solidar, what would that say about Russian advances in that area? I think we, the yeah, great question. I, I think, look, we got to take a little, we got to keep this in perspective. Um, uh, we don't know how it's going to go, so I'm not going to predict failure or success here. But even if, uh, both Bakhmut and Solodar fall to the Russians. It's not going uh, to make a, uh, it's not going to have a strategic impact on the war itself. And it certainly isn't going to stop the Ukrainians or, or slow them down in terms of their, uh, their efforts to regain their territory. And I would remind, I mean, I know we're all focused on those two towns right now, but just, again, take a couple of steps back, and if you look at what's been happening over the last 10 and a half months, particularly in the Donbass, towns and villages have swapped hands quite frequently. So uh, my, my last comment would be, don't count the Ukrainians out. Uh, thank you. I would like to follow up on Patsy's question on the tanks for Ukraine. Poland says that it will deliver the tanks only as a part as a, of a larger international coalition. And it's uh, encouraging other countries to join. So I'm wondering if President Biden is considering joining this coalition by sending U.S. Abrams tanks, and if he's encouraging other countries, including Germany, to do the same. I won't get ahead of decisions on security assistance that haven't been made yet. Um, uh, we have been, I think, very effective at uh, providing security assistance uh, that evolves with the way the war has evolved. Um, and, you know, now, you know, Two weeks ago, we were talking about Patriots and air defense, and today, you know, we're talking about armored vehicles and, 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 and tanks. Um, so I won't get ahead of the president's decisions he's going to make. As I said to Patsy, we're grateful for the support that other nations are, are, are providing. They each do it in their own way, on a, 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 in a size, scale, and scope, and a pace uh, that they're comfortable with. These are sovereign decisions, and we respect that. The President Zelensky has said he's interested in tanks, and now you have some countries that are showing a willingness to provide tanks. That's all to the good. Uh, the United States will continue to provide our security assistance in 
in the same way we have for the last ten and a half months, look, working in lockstep with the Ukrainians um, and making sure that uh, that we're meeting their needs as best we can. And if we can't, that we're working with allies and partners to do the same. And 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 again, I uh, you asked about this uh, co coalition or alliance. Um, I, again, we believe that. Uh, there has been an incredible framework established already internationally to provide uh, assistance, security assistance specifically to Ukraine, and that's through this Ukraine Defense Contact Group. There's another meeting next week. We're very excited about that and looking forward to it. I follow up? Because the president says that the war is in a critical point. If the war is at a critical point, why wait? It takes time to uh, train Ukrainians to operate those tanks. Nobody's why waiting. waiting. Nobody's waiting. I mean, almost every two weeks, like clockwork, we're getting up here and talking to you about uh, billions of dollars of more assistance uh, that are going to, to Ukraine. The United States is the leader of the world. I mean, we've almost $25 billion since the start of this war. Uh, no other nation comes close to providing the kind of security assistance that we have. It's not about waiting. It's about working in lockstep with the Ukrainians, making sure that we understand their needs and capabilities, and delivering those capabilities the best way that we can. And, I'm, and, and when I say we, I don't just mean the U.S., I mean the big we. Uh, and sometimes those assets are not going to come from the United States. Uh, sometimes they're going to come from other nations. And maybe that's better for the Ukrainians, uh, either because they can get there faster or because it's, uh, it's a capability that they're more comfortable using and won't need quite as much training and operation and maintenance uh, on it. And there's lots of reasons, that, uh, lots of things that go into these decisions. Yeah. All right, Justin, you have the last question. Oh, I was, in fact, going to ask, not that we don't always appreciate uh, your appearance in the briefing room, but if we could oh, maybe pick it. Yeah, I was trying to give you the last question. It's fine, it's fine with me. I, I will depart. All right. Thanks, everybody. Justin. Jeez. Justin. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Justin. Justin did not hold back at all. Um, and I think you did that on the plane last week, too. I remember. I'm keeping yeah, track. All right, all right. I'm keeping track. Um, <laughs> all right, Chris, it's yours. Uh, so a few questions about the classified documents. Uh, first off, is the president willing to be interviewed by federal investigators about his handling of classified documents? So first, let me just say, I, I'm just not going to get into hypotheticals. This is something for the Department it's not of... not a hypothetical question. There's an investigation ongoing. I, Will the I, president but take it's, the it's in the... Re it's in go ongoing review, right? You're asking me about something in the future, and I am telling you that I'm not going to get ahead of what the Department of Justice is going to decide. Look, I want to reiterate uh, what you heard from the president today. It is important for the American people to know this. Uh, is that the president has said he takes classified documents and information very seriously. This is something, as you all know, that he uh, that uh, he will not shy away from saying and has continued to say this this week. And again, he was surprised that these uh, records have been found. He does not know what's in them. And his team, once they ident identified that these documents were, were there, they immediately uh, reached out to the archives, to the Department of Justice, and did the rightfully so did the right thing by turning that over. And they have been cooperating uh, very closely with the Department of Justice. You actually heard uh, AG, Attorney General Garland, say today that they heard from his team uh, really shortly after the discovery. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that this is understood, that he takes this very seriously. So speaking of him taking it seriously, uh, this is the kind of thing that can cause government employees to lose a security clearance. This is a serious matter, as the White House has said. Uh, was the president sloppy in his handling of classified material if there are multiple locations where classified documents are being found? Look, I said this in my, I said that in the statement, it's in the statement of, uh, uh, from his lawyer, Richard Sauber, and at the end, he said, we are confident that their thorough review will show that these documents were inadvertently misplaced and the president and his lawyers acted promptly upon discovery of this mistake. I'm going to leave it there. That's what his lawyer said. But again, this is something that the president takes very seriously, and we have been uh, coordinating. They have been coordinating. His lawyers have been coordinating very closely so, uh, with the Department of Justice. The last thing is, initial statement from the White House came on Monday. The president addressed us on Tuesday in Mexico City. All the conversation was about the documents in the office. However, according to the Attorney General, documents were found on December 20th, in his garage in Wilmington. Why was that not immediately addressed? Is the White House being transparent about that if that was already known and not discussed up front? So just to, you said transparent. I want to say that we have been transparent here. 
Uh, that is why the minute that his lawyers found those documents, uh, they reported it. They reached out to the archives and the Department of Justice, and they did that voluntarily. Uh, and they were not compelled to do it. They did it voluntarily. Now, I want to step back a little bit as you're asking me about the timeline. Look, the lawyer said we have been working closely with the Department of Justice and coordinating a search that was still ongoing uh, to ensure any additional documents were in the proper possession of the government. After that search, uh, after the search concluded last night, uh, we released a statement disclosing the facts from that search, as you all know, this morning. Uh, this is all part of the Justice Department process, and you heard the Attorney General speak to this today. Uh, so we are being very careful to be uh, fully cooperative with the Department of Justice and providing details as appropriate as part of that process. So why did you fully describe the documents when we were firstly asked this week? Because and I and I actually answered that question. I said because there was a process uh, happening that was currently ongoing, and uh, and I'll refer you back to my comments that I made uh, just yesterday. Go ahead, Mary. Just a couple of things I want to clarify, just to make sure that our reporting is as accurate as possible. You know, the the special counsel's the White House counsel's uh, statement this morning said that documents were found in the president's Wilmington residence garage and in an adjacent room. But when the president mentioned this himself in person earlier. He said they were found in storage areas and in his personal library. So can you just clear this up? Which room, where were the documents actually found in his residence? Okay, so let me just step back because I know all of you will have a lot of questions. Uh, so I'll lay this out very clearly uh, and precisely. I don't want, clearly want to make sure no one is confused, as you just said, Mary. As soon as the president's lawyers found these documents, they immediately contacted archives and Department of Justice, as I've said many times already, to ensure that they were handled properly. The president has said this. We are being fully cooperative with the Department of Justice throughout this process as part of the president's lawyers look through the places where documents could have been stored and the council's office release, as you said, a statement explaining that. So I would refer you back to the statement. I don't have anything more to say, but that search was completed last night. And now this is in the hands of the Justice Department. So look, I want to be very prudent here, as I said yesterday, uh, as you all have reported over and over again. Uh, so uh, about any questions about this, any specifics, there's a review going on. Uh, and I would refer to Department of Justice or my colleagues in the council's office. But again, I'm just not going to go beyond what the president said. We just laid out uh, where we just laid out the process that was taken. It sounds like you're saying we should go off of the council statement saying it was found in the garage in an adjacent room. I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying I'm not going to go beyond what the, pres the president said. I'm not going to, I completely, I, Mary, I completely understand. I just want to be very careful because there is an ongoing uh, investigation. I want to be prudent here uh, and uh, make sure if you have any additional questions about where, where things were found, again, I I refer you to the statement. I'm not going to go beyond what the president said. And one other point of clarification. You know, the president said Tuesday he was surprised to learn about the documents at, at the Penn Biden Center, that he didn't know what was in these documents. He didn't sort of repeat that this morning about the documents found at his residence. So was he also surprised to learn that there were classified documents at his he, residence? And does he know any information about so what's look, in them? So he, again, he was surprised that the uh, that the documents uh, were there. And that is, that is also in line with uh, what we what we shared this morning. And again, he takes this very seriously when it comes to classified information, when it comes to uh, um, uh, classified documents. And again, it still stays the same. He was surprised that the records were found. Uh, he does not know what's in them. That has not changed. And again, his team, when they identified that they were, uh, that they, um, uh, that they were there. They immediately reached out to the archives, reached out to DOJ, just as they did last night and, and uh, as we have pretty much laid out uh, previously. And one more, just because much has been made of, of the differences here between what you all have handled these, these documents and the way that the former president handled documents that were taken from the White House. Uh, when the FBI went, the FBI, sorry, Garland said when the FBI went to the location being the president's residence uh, and secured these documents, did the FBI just retrieve documents, or was there a search of the residence? Again, I'm, I'm just not going to go into the particulars or the specifics of what the Department of Justice did. Uh, I can speak to what we have done uh, and what is already out there. We laid out a, a statement pretty extensively on Monday. We've been uh, laid out a, a statement this morning on what was found last night. Uh, I'm just not going to go beyond. I would refer you to the Department of, of Justice to give you the specifics uh, on that. As you know, there's an ongoing process. There's a review currently occurring.
Gotcha. Thanks. I got great. Can you can you shed any light on how the documents got to these places and why? Again, there's an ongoing process. It's being reviewed. Uh, don't have any. Uh, don't have more to share. I'm going to let the Department of Justice uh, answer any questions uh, as they're looking at this. Does the White House think that the appointment of a special prosecutor was warranted? I'm not going to get into the decisions that were that was made by the Attorney General. I will say this, and you've heard me say this many times before, uh, this is a president that believes in the independence of uh, the Justice Department. This is something that he has been saying uh, since the campaign, and you've heard me say this over and over in restoring uh, that ind independence. So uh, look, we have been very, very careful here uh, not to appear from the White House to influence their decision making on, 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 uh, on uh, any number number of issues, as you've heard me say over and over again. I've said this many times. I'm sure someone has counted the amount of times that I've said that the Department of Justice is independent and we respect their independence. I am certainly not going to uh, comment on uh, uh, or, or give my opinion. Uh, or we, or, are we going to give our opinion on what the Attorney General laid out today? What broadly does the White House make of comparisons between uh, President Biden's handling of documents? and former President Trump's family. I'm not going to get into politics from here. What I can say is what I've laid out, uh, which is the President takes this very seriously. He does. He said this twice. And um, he did not know uh, that the records uh, were there when they were found. Uh, he does not know what's in them. And what he did and what his team did is the minute that they realized uh, that the documents were there, uh, they reached out to the archives, they reached out to the Department of Justice. And I'll just leave it, I'll leave it, I'll leave it there and I'll leave you all to, uh, to pontificate and do your punditry. I will not do that from here. Go ahead. Thanks, Karine. Uh, in the statement from the Special Counsel about the second set of documents, it says the lawyers have completed the ongoing review by the President's legal uh, team last night. Does that mean there are no other locations where documents could be stored? There's no other search underway at this moment in time for documents from the Vice President's time? So as, uh, as I'm just going to, again, that, that statement pretty much lays, lays, that, lays it out, that uh, they, um, they have, uh, as part as the lawyers, they look through the places where documents could have been uh, stored, and the counsel's office released a statement uh, on that. Now it is in the hands of the special counsel. So we should assume that it, that it's been completed? It, it, you should assume that it's been completed, yes. Okay, and then I just want to score something that Chris was asking about. The review was underway when you guys gave a detailed statement about the first set of documents. Mm -hmm. The review was underway when the president spoke about the first set of documents. You're now saying that you didn't talk about the second set of documents discovered almost a month prior because a review was underway. I, like, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. No, like, the I review was underway the entire time. The only difference was that reporters had information on the first set of documents, and therefore you chose to exclude mm -hmm. the second set of documents until reporters got information on the second set of documents. Well, let me unconfuse you uh, for a second, Phil. Look, we are trying to do this by the book. And I said yesterday this was under uh, review by the Department of Justice. And the process is as such. Uh, when, the pre when the president's lawyers realized that the, do the documents existed, that they were there, they reached out to the archives, they reached out to the Department of Justice, rightfully so, may I add, that is what you're supposed to do as lawyers, that's what they did, and they have fully been cooperating uh, with, um, uh, with the Department of Justice. And again, I, I said this earlier in answering a question uh, you heard from the Attorney General. He said shortly after the documents were uh, discovered, uh, they, they, that we did outreach, uh, the President's lawyers did outreach uh, to, uh, to the Department of Justice and no, archives. Nobody's questioning that. That's not what we're asking about. We're asking about... I'm telling you that there's a process. I just laid out what the process I'm is. Sure. I'm and I'm telling you that process. we were trying to do this by the book, and it, it was an ongoing process. I'm not going to get beyond that, uh, it, but that is how this works. How can you say this yeah. was transparent yeah. when you've you, sat on this information for more than two months? Thank you, Kareem. Um, Thank you. We are seeking information, and I appreciate and understand why the press office can only say so much. So help us understand this. Who are the president's personal counsel that the attorney general referred to today? Uh, I have to get. I was asked that question earlier. Let me get back to you. I, I actually uh, don't have that answer. I think I know who it is, but I want to make a hundred percent clear. Bob Bauer is one. Potentially mm -hmm. Dana Remus, James Garland, Robert Lent. Uh, Are look, they the ones that have been so contacting the Justice Department? Look again. I I don't want to. I want to say the right thing from here. So 
I we would uh, have to uh, I would have to talk to the White House counsel, or you would have to reach out to the White House counsel to talk about who who is his personal lawyers. And to button who this are up, the first set of documents were found in November at the Penn Biden Center here in Washington. Mm -hmm. But why did it take until yesterday and until this morning, apparently, for whoever it was to inform Robert Lausch that that final document was found? Was that because there were press reports earlier this week? Again, and the hope was that nobody would find out. Again, or was it because there is a process, an ongoing process that is occurring? We did this by the book, and what I mean by that is the moment that the lawyers discovered that the papers were there or the documents were there, they reached out to the archives, they reached out to the Department of Justice, and they immediately, rightfully so, reached out to them uh, to let them know what what they had discovered, and that is the process. Uh, that is what we that that is what his lawyers did, uh, and uh, again, it's an ongoing process. As you stated in your question, I am limited in what I can say. It is now in the hands of the Department of Justice. Uh, they are reviewing this, as you know. The special counsel was announced by the attorney general, and so I will uh, leave it there. What was the president trying to say when he referenced his Corvette earlier today? Because it sounded like he was implying that because his garage is a safe place for his car, the documents were safe. And, and therefore, it was a, if it was safe for the car, it was safe for the documents. Is that what he meant? Look, I, I'm going to just leave his statement as is. Uh, I think you, your colleagues was having a, a back and forth with the president. Uh, you can read the transcript of what was asked of him and why he responded that way. I'm just not going to get into specifics. And you talk about we are being transparent. Who's we and what is the definition of transparent in this case? Is it the lawyers being transparent legally? with the archives and the Justice Department, or is it the White House writ large being transparent with the general public? So number one, and I've said this multiple times already, we take this very seriously. The President takes this very seriously. He was not aware that the records were there. Uh, he does not know what, what is in uh, the documents. Uh, again, classified information, uh, classified documents, he takes very seriously. When they were discovered, and this is the right thing to do, Right? His lawyers reached out immediately to the archivists. They reached out to the Department of Justice to let them know that the, the, the papers or the Who documents assisted. The archivist or the Justice Department? I, because the I, Attorney General this morning said that the attorneys reached out to the archives. It was only later in December when the second batch was apparently found. I, I will, then they were I, reaching out to the Justice I will Department. Leave it, I will leave it to what the Department of Justice is laying out. What we are saying that we reached out to the archivist, we reached out to the Department of Justice. That is what is the right thing to do in this case. And, and not, and, 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 so I can finish here. Um, what has been transparent in this as well is that the White House counsel has let, has laid out uh, in detail on Monday but to all of you. But everything, Kareen, and you know that. First of all, I can't talk about this, right, because it is, the Department of Justice is reviewing it. There is a review happening, Ed. Right? You know this. We just heard from the Attorney General. There is a review. I am limited in what I can say to this. Could Richard Sauber perhaps come here? I think, you should, come I here? think you should reach out uh, to the White House Counsel. We're reaching out on a constant basis. Okay. Why not have them come okay. here? I am saying to, to you questions. that we have put out lengthy statements and you can reach out to them as you all have been doing. And I will leave it there. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, why not have them come and answer just, the questions? I, they have been. They have been talking to you all pretty regularly the last couple of days. Uh, we have put out, they have put out uh, lengthy st statements on this. I just read out uh, what Sh Richard Sarber had to say, and I would refer you to the White House counsel. I am limited in what I can say because, because the Department of Justice, we see them as being independent when it comes to these types of issues. And so I'm not going to go beyond what the president say, said, and I'm not going to go beyond what the, the lawyers say. I have to go around. You've asked me about, be, you've asked me, Ed. That then, that there's going to be a limit in transparency, public, non-legal transparency, and what can be shared and said by this way. I disagree. There has, I disagree, Ed. There has not been a limit of transparency. These that is, that is, that is, there has not been a limit about. of transparency. See that I will I will disagree with you so on that, Justin. Two months. Justin. Thanks, Crane. Uh, I I did want to kind of follow up on what Ed and, and Phil were asking, which is putting aside the question of whether the president's lawyers acted properly in handing the documents over. There's this lingering question of why there wasn't an acknowledgement of the second set of documents earlier this week. 
and you said that you're working through a process and going by the book. And I'm, what I'm curious is yeah. if you're trying to sort of hint at the idea that the Justice Department asked you not to reveal the second set of documents, or you were told in some way not to disclose anything that had not been made public. I, I would not jump to those two conclusions. That is not what I'm stating. I am genuinely saying to you there is an ongoing process uh, that we are going to follow, and I am limited in what I can say from here. That is why my White House counsel colleagues, are the we refer to them uh, these past couple of days. Now this is in the hands of the Department of Justice, so, as, we, as, as you all heard from the Attorney General uh, it, himself. I think it, I guess I remain confused. If the Justice Department didn't ask you not to disclose these documents, why on Monday, as this news was coming out, Tuesday, as the President was talking about it, you didn't say, here's everything we know at this point? You know, the, the first set was found at the Penn Biden Center, the second set was found at his office were searching to make sure that there's nothing else. Because there's an ongoing process, and you heard directly from, from the Attorney General today, and that is the process. That is how this is going to go. It is not going to come from here, from me at this podium. It is going to come from the Department of Justice, and that is just the process that's happening currently. I feel slightly bad about chasing Kirby from the room, so I'm going to ask you one thing not about the special counsel, which is... What? No, now you can't, you can't now ask a question that you could have asked to Kirby. Well, it wasn't for Kirby. It, it oh. was for you. Um, okay. You got a question yesterday, actually, about um, Moderna mm -hmm. raising the mm -hmm. prices of the COVID vaccine and said that you take the question. I was wondering if you had And I did. I actually did. And Michael is not here. I was going to uh, provide this information uh, uh, to him uh, today. So I don't want, first, I don't want anybody to be confused here. As you know, this is incredibly important. Uh, so you can go to 90,000 locations and get a Moderna or any COVID-19 shot for free. That is currently what folks can do, and uh, they are our best uh, protection against the XBB 1.5 right now. Uh, so please, if you haven't, please go get your shot. As you've heard from me, as you've heard from our uh, COVID-19 team here, uh, has been very clear on why this is important and why folks should get their shots. What, when, as it relates to the question, what Senator Sanders is talking about is future shots. Uh, and the process of moving forward, uh, moving toward a commercial market for COVID shots. Uh, so we share this concern that those shots should be affordable. Uh, that is something that we tr we uh, share the concern with um, Senator Sanders. Uh, the price hike here is hard to uh, to understand or to justify. Uh, again, uh, we uh, we are, we do have those concerns as well, and we believe that shots should be affordable. Go ahead, Tam. Yeah, a couple of basic geography questions you may not be able to answer, but. Is the library a room adjacent to the garage? Again, I, I don't have any any of this information that I can provide. I would this is under review. Uh, I would um, I, I would uh, uh, refer you to Department of Justice. I'm just not going to go into specifics here. Not something that I can do from here. And is the president's Corvette stored in the garage where the documents were found? Just for pure I, fact I, purposes. Well, I will. Basically, repeat what the president said. His Corvette is in the garage. I'm not going to go beyond what the president said. Okay. And, and on the transparency issue, um, would you um, admit that earlier this week the White House shared incomplete information? Uh, I think that when we all heard Merrick Garland say that these documents at the residence were found on December 20th, that they were notified, that was pretty surprising to all of us based on the statements that you and the president and the counsel's office had made. Well, as I just said, the, uh, as you saw in our statement, the documents uh, that were found la last night, right, they completed uh, the, uh, uh, the search uh, with documents being found last night. And then this morning, we put out, uh, we put out you heard from the White House counsel, uh, you, we put out uh, the information on uh, specifically what was found. But just one document was found last night. The search was continuing. It was ongoing. The process, as I've been saying, was ongoing. And the, the search is clearly complete. And therefore, we shared the information with all of you. Again, this is an ongoing process. I would refer you to the Department of Justice on any other specifics or particulars, uh, even on timeline, uh, or any other questions that you have. I don't have any regrets. Uh, right here. Oh. I'm going to go back. Go ahead. Um, I want to follow up to um, a couple questions. But is the president confident? You said that the search has been completed, but is the president confident that there are no additional documents with classified markings that remain in any other additional locations? Look, uh, I can just refer you to what his team said. The search is complete. 
Uh, he is confident in this process, and I will leave it there. And, and they've been cooperating very closely with the Department of Justice. And, and we've gotten the statement that the White House did not get advance notice that Garland was appointing a special counsel. That is counsel. correct. The when did the president learn? How did he learn? Uh, was it from the press conference? Did he get a, a heads up before that? We learned from the press conference. President. The president, we, we were not giving a heads up, and we learned from the press conference. He was in a funeral at the time. When did somebody tell him? I, look, he was at a funeral, to your point. Maybe one of, his, uh, one of his senior advisors may have told him. I actually don't know specifically when he knew, but what I can say to you, he was, we were not giving a heads up. That I can confirm, as you all know already. And have you had a chance to talk to him since then? Can no, you give us I, his reaction? I have not had this? a chance to talk to the president about this or his reaction. Um, does the White House feel like House Republicans have a right to conduct an investigation on documents issued? They've, of course, start, started sending requests and saying they're going to look into this. Um, does that fall in the realm of sort of legitimate requests from, from House Republicans right Look, now? Look, I'm not going to speak to the, what the House Republicans decide to do. What I can speak to is that we are, uh, the President's lawyers is, is uh, complying and they, they are working on this uh, with the Department of Justice, uh, as they have been. Again, this is something that the President takes very seriously when it comes to classified information, when it comes to classified documents. I'm just not going to go into what, what the Republicans uh, on the House do or don't do. And then, sorry, just separate from, from this, I was wondering if the White House had any thought on the uh, Senate primary in California that's shaping up? So as you know, uh, the President um, uh, sees uh, Senator Feinstein as a longtime friend uh, and also a colleague who he deeply respects and has collaborated on historic pieces of legislation over the years, uh, and such as uh, the last federal ban on assault, assault, uh, assault weapons. So he respects uh, the talented officials in California who are expressing interest in running for her seat. And we are prohibited from here, as you know, uh, about uh, talking about campaigns or elections, uh, not something that I can do from the, from the podium. So it would be inappropriate for me to weigh in uh, with more specifics on any forthcoming uh, Senate race, including, uh, including the one in California. Uh, but clearly, he sees her as a longtime friend and colleague. Good job. Yeah, the uh, president, uh, when he was in Mexico City and asked about the classified documents that were found in, in the private office at the Penn Biden Center uh, said that he didn't know what the documents uh, contained or what was in them. Is that the case also with the documents found uh, at his Wilmington residence that he didn't know, he doesn't know what those uh, documents involve? Yeah, I already answered the question and he does not know. He's not aware of that the, doc the rec records were there. I'll come over. Sorry, could you just clarify a little bit more about when you say that we inform the archives immediately, the Department of Justice immediately, since this happens in various uh, points in time, what exactly was said at which juncture? Because it seems to be there's some conflict there and some... Uh, look, again, I will refer you to the Department of Justice. What I can tell you is that his lawyers uh, reached out to the archivist, to the Department of Justice, which is what you're supposed to do, which is the right thing to do. I'm not going to get into specifics of time, of who who they reached, reached out to first. I would refer you to the White House Counsel to get more specifics. Uh, it is an ongoing process, uh, you, uh, and I would uh, again refer to either the White House Counsel or the Department of Justice for that for that specific question. Go ahead, Kristen. Just a couple of um, outstanding clarifications before I get to questions. Um, Salver said there were documents in the garage and one document in an adjacent room. Merrick Garland said the DOJ was informed of one additional document this morning. Is that the same document, the additional document and the document found in the adjacent room? So let me just say, during the review, and this is uh, so that folks know, uh, the lawyers discovered among personal and political papers a small number of additional Obama-Biden administration records with classified markings. All but one of these documents were found in storage space in the, the President's Wilmington residence gar uh, uh, garage. One document consisting of one page was discovered among stored materials in an adjacent room. No documents were found in the Rehoboth Beach House. Look, I just want to underscore that this is something, uh, uh, again, that um, that the, pr the president takes very seriously. Uh, uh, it underscores how uh, we executed the search with the DOJ uh, to uh, to make to make sure that they continued cooperating fully uh, with the review. And I think that is uh, what we are trying to be uh, to be very clear about is that uh, we have been uh, the the president's lawyers has been cooperating fully, fully. I'm I'm not going to get into the specifics as to uh, you 
have the statement, I would refer you to the president's lawyer or anything else uh, specifically on this or the Department of Justice because they are actually reviewing this currently. To go back to something we were trying to pin down yesterday, can you tell us today when did the president find out initially about that first batch of documents and then the second batch? Our reporting says he was told on November 2nd. Is that true? So what I can say to you uh, is that the president uh, has been kept uh, in, um, has been kept informed by his counsel throughout uh, this process. I don't, don't have a specific date, but I can tell you that the president was kept uh, informed throughout. Don't have a, a, a timeline to share for you right now. Again, this is under uh, ongoing review, uh, and so want to be careful and prudent of what I share here at the podium. When the search started and why they were searching in the first place, was the president concerned that there may be classified documents? Did someone tip them off? What sparked this? A again, I'm just not going to go into details from here. I'm not going to go into specifics from here. Uh, th this is undergoing, un un uh, this review is continuing, is ongoing. Uh, I would refer you to Department of Justice. I mean, you have said repeatedly, the president has said he takes classified documents very seriously. If that's the case, why were these classified documents being stored in his garage? Look, again, um, and not just me, he has said this. You have heard the president say this twice already, um, and he's said this before, classified documents uh, and information, he takes that very seriously. And this you see- The garage is an appropriate place to store classified I, I'm, I'm not going to go into, uh, in, into, <laughs> into what he thinks or how he feels about what is currently happening. What I can say for sure when it comes to this a specific issue about uh, classified documents, about classified information. He takes that very seriously. He did not know, right? He did not know the records were there. Uh, he was surprised that the records were there. So let's be very clear. That is something that the president shared with all of you on the world stage and also recently today. Uh, and uh, and so what he what occurred was, as I've said multiple times before, is when his team identified that these records uh, uh, existed, they did they um, uh, they uh, handed them over to the archivist and also the Department of Justice. Just one more, sure. do you acknowledge that the fact that the White House did not reveal this to the public, despite the fact that you've known about it for months? undercuts the president's promise of being transparent with the American people. But we but here's the thing. They were transparent. There was there there was transparency in doing what you're supposed to do when these when these items were discovered. Not with the American people. Look we, I am here standing in front of you answering these questions, right? The president took two questions this week on this. You've heard, wait, let me just answer. You've heard from the White House counsel who put out multiple statements on this. And so, again, this is an ongoing process. Uh, we want to respect the process. Uh, and we have laid out very clearly what occurred. Uh, and uh, again, don't want to get ahead of this. The Department of Justice, you you all can uh, will will get your your questions answered uh, from them during uh, during this uh, during this time. And so I would just refer you to the Department of Justice. And now, as you all know, there's a special counsel dealing with this case. Uh, thank you, Corrine. Another one on Garage Gate. What is the White House trying to hide? Nothing. Someone gave the president a statement to read on Tuesday that was incomplete at best, misleading at worst? Who? So I have read out the president's statement. I have read it out yesterday and what he said. He said that he, will, he respects or he takes classified information and documents very seriously. That's what he said. He said that he did not know that the, the records were there. He does not know what's in them. He said that. You heard from him directly on this. And his team has been cooperating fully, fully. And not only that, again, I'll say this, the Attorney General said this himself, that he heard from the team shortly after. So we have laid out, laid out uh, what has occurred here. You've heard from the White House counsel. Uh, I just read the statement uh, from, uh, from his lawyer. And again, uh, you know, we take this very seriously, and the President does as well. When will the White House release a log of visitors to the Wilmington House? You know, um, Peter, you've asked this question, or as your colleagues have asked this question before. Let's not forget uh, what we did here in this White House. We instituted something that the last administration 
got rid of, which is putting out the White House, uh, putting, uh, making sure that there was a White House log, extensive White House log, so the American I mean, people got to see House where again, there is potentially again, unsecured well, classified again, material. Again, I am telling you, we did something that the last administration got rid of, which is instituting the White House logs. Uh, did you ask the last administration why they got rid of the White House logs? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Well, we did Fox did? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Del Delaware residents. Oh, I'm sorry. I was calling not, the gentleman who wanted to ask a question that was not related to this. Go ahead. Thanks, Karen. I appreciate it. I know I'm a little behind the news cycle here, but I want to go back to yesterday's uh, op-ed from the president on big tech regulation. Um, in Washington State, we've got uh, the, the chairs of both the Senate and the House Commerce Committees, and uh, Congresswoman Morris Rogers put out a statement saying, essentially, great, I, I, let's do it. Let's put forward this uh, bill that passed her committee almost unanimously last Congress, the uh, Data Privacy Protection Act. I just want to know if the President supports and the White House supports that bill. So the President has long called for uh, strong privacy protections. That is something that he's been doing and calling for uh, since almost the beginning of his administration. We are heartened to see bipartisan uh, cooperation continue on this important issue, on this critical issue. As the President said in his Wall Street Journal op-ed, as you mentioned, as you were referring to the op-ed that, that uh, came out, uh, recently Democrats and Republicans need to come together to pass uh, serious federal protections for Americans' privacy, including the strongest possible protections for minors. That means clear limits on how companies can collect, use, and share highly personal data. Uh, we welcome, to your question, we welcome the partnership of Senator Cantwell, our Chairwoman uh, McMorris Rogers, Congressman Pallone, and others in getting a bipartisan product to the President's desk that protects our privacy and also protects our, the privacy of our children. We think this is a critical, important issue. Uh, and uh, again, we'll continue to call for this. The point on that has been specifically a pushback from California lawmakers uh, worried about preempting state laws like California's. Does the president believe that it's important to have a strong, like a national standard for data privacy, even if it's weaker than individual state laws. So look, I don't have uh, I don't have any uh, uh, news to make about specifics of the pieces. Uh, that's what's the, the specific pieces of the legislation. Uh, I'll just say I'll just say this: we work uh, we look forward to uh, working with both parties uh, and both houses to get privacy and uh, other tech uh, legislation done. We think again, it's important for uh, the protection of uh, the pri the protection the pr protection of privacy is important for Americans across the country. But also, uh, let's not forget our children. Karina. Was the Corvette searched? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Karina. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, thank you, Karina. I have a couple of questions here, but I wanted to follow up quickly. You have said repeatedly that the President's lawyers did the right thing, but you also said earlier during the briefing of the President's lawyers immediately reaching out to the National Archives uh, that, quote, they were not compelled to do it. They did it voluntarily. Is it the position of the White House that legally uh, the president could have just held on to these? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they did the right thing, period. I wouldn't read into it. I'm saying that they did the right thing and they did it voluntarily because it is the right thing to do when you uh, find these types of documents to indeed reach out to the archivist and reach out to the Department of Justice. So they, and, and outside of that, they have been cooperating very closely uh, with uh, cooperating very closely with the Department of Justice. It is the, and rightfully so, they did this. But I guess I, I'm just a little confused and I want to move on, but what did you mean when you said that they, you know, were not compelled to do it? They did it. They did it. They did the right thing. Okay. That's it. Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into uh, down into a rabbit hole on this. They did the right thing by reaching out to the archivist and to the Department of Justice. Does the White House know how many stops these classified documents made before they ended up in his home in Delaware or in the Biden Pen office. For instance, can you rule out that there was a third stop between a secure location and the garage? Again, I would refer you to Department of Justice. Okay. There was a question that was asked about the visitor logs with regards to folks who have come in and out of the president's home in Delaware. Does the administration have any idea between the garage and the Biden Penn office um, just how many people could have gotten their hands on this? Or you know, are we to assume that the White House <clears throat> doesn't have an estimate? That they There's don't an know? ongoing review on this, and I would refer you to the Department of, of Justice. Okay, and then you know, just finally. Um, the president has said that his lawyers have advised him not to ask what was in these classified documents. I don't understand the purpose of that. He's the president of the United States. 
PAS matches Because we're trying to do this by the book. We're trying to do this uh, in, in the appropriate way. Uh, and so that's what I would say to you. We have, uh, we have his team has been uh, complying, right, uh, cooperating uh, with, uh, with the Department of Justice, and I will leave it there. I'm not well, going to go beyond. The book says that he can't look at this. What would compel him or push him in that direction? Because you've said that repeatedly. What, I guess, as he tries to do this by the book, as he tries to do the right thing, you know, what are his lawyers looking at? that says, yeah, don't look at this classified information that was found. Again, there's a process here. The process is that when the lawyers found that these documents existed, they reached out to uh, the archive and also the Department of Justice. That is the process, and they have been uh, they have been cooperating uh, closely, working closely uh, with the Department of Justice. And now, as you've heard, the Attorney General made a, a statement today, and so I would refer you uh, to them. All right, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Twice in the last six months, the FBI has had to visit the home, private home, of a current and a former president to collect classified material. Does the federal government have a records retention problem that needs to be addressed? Look, I'm not going to get into uh, the politics of this or the specifics of this. All I can say is the president has been very clear on this. He takes this very seriously. Uh, again, uh, he was surprised that the, the records were there, that the documents were there. Uh, he does not know what's in them. His team did the right thing, right, which is uh, as the moment that they realized the documents were there, they reached out to the archive uh, and they reached out to the DOJ. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, everybody.